can finally say I'm an official gamer. Well, partially. My computer doesn't have any anime or furry references, so uh, I'm a disappointing gamer. Nice. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be titling this video, but even though I'm going from Sony's jet engine to the next generation of graphics cards, I don't really want to compare them because I, I don't feel like that's a very fair comparison. Especially this compare. I mean, you're going from a console, mine specifically that's about two years old, to what would be considered a very high-end PC loaded with SSDs. So in comparison, like if we were just to compare loading times on Doom Eternal between both of these, I mean, I could have Doom Eternal up and running any level in a matter of 20 seconds. On console, it'd be about a minute and a half, maybe a little longer than that. Plus, I can run the game on everything maxed out at an average of 180 to 190 FPS. There is no reason to compare the two. It's like comparing Michael Phelps to the kid that almost drowns every morning in his own drool. Leaps and bounds ahead. But rather, what I wanted to talk about was my experience going from console to PC. Maybe answer some questions. Right now, we're at a really weird time in gaming where the next generation of consoles came out at the same time as the next generations and CPUs and GPUs and people are getting more into PC gaming now more than ever, myself included. I mean, I built my PC. And prior to 2020, I didn't know jack shit about computers. I mean, beyond the power button, turning things on and off, that was my knowledge. Off, on. That is it. Now, obviously, as of this recording, everything is also all sold out. But I think moving forward where PlayStation 5, the Xbox series, and the next CPUs and GPUs start to become more in stock, I think that this video would still be relevant to those that are curious on whether if they should go console again or just saying fuck it and switching over to PC if you have a little bit of extra money to throw that way. So I'm going to get this out of the way because it's kind of the elephant in the room. Everything is sold out right now. Uh, GPUs, especially the 30 series or 6000 series, you are not going to find online. Even AMD's new Ryzen CPUs are sold out. You can probably find them online, but you're most likely going to get them from a scalper that are definitely going to be doubling the price on every single one of these products. And fuck them, don't support that. You supporting that is like supporting priests that touch kids. You want to be associated with that, do you? Hell no. So I would say wait a couple months, that stuff comes in stock. If you need a PC right now for whatever reason, your best bet would definitely be going pre-built. NZXT or Ironside, you know, those retailers online have 30 series on hand, even 6,000 series. At least the last time I checked, they have 3070s, 3060 Ti's, 3080s, whatever you're looking for, they could be having that stuff in stock. Even mid to low tier stuff that are sold out on Amazon, they could have like a Ryzen 5 3600 with the 2060 Super. I mean, even, even that combination is pretty good. I think, I think, I mean, even though I built my PC, I don't want to anger any PC supremacists for not getting my shit right. But I'm just saying, as of right now, your best bet could be going pre-built. If not, and you can wait to stocks replenish and everything is available again, which could give you a good amount of time to also stock up a little extra money, I would recommend going the route of building your own PC. And no, not, not for the sake of saying, oh, I'm a better person than you because I built my own PC. I mean, doing that is like saying, I'm a better person because I bought bigger breasts. Well, I hate to break it to you, but your nipples are not symmetrical and they're both pointed in different directions. So, so the doctor you met in TJ did a horrible job. Giant waste of money. And just like that's a waste of money, I would say, especially if you're working on a budget, a pre-build is a little bit of a waste of money as well because theoretically, a chunk of that money is going to be put in labor for the pre-build and I would rather have that extra $100 be invested in an SSD or a better GPU or more RGB so that way your FPS can fly past 8,000 and if you're playing something like COD, you're just beaming everyone. Those motherfuckers don't see you coming. So that's what I would say. But between a pre-build and building your own stuff, I would recommend building your own stuff and with YouTube being being so much better at teaching you than today's parents, you can learn how to build a computer in about an hour. I mean, I can build one now without even watching anything. What takes me the longest is cable management. And, and me and cable management is like watching a stroke victim use his paralyzed hand to write down his social security number with his phone number and name while using his dominant hand to see if his junk still works. It's a struggle. Let's move on to price. I think a sweet spot would be a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred, which definitely sounds like a lot, especially in comparison to console. But think about it: with console, you're paying what? I think it's like five hundred dollars just to play games, maybe to watch Netflix, watch some movies on PC. For some people, it's your workspace. Not only you're playing games at higher frame rates, better graphics, better precision if you're playing first-person shooters. But in my case, I use it to edit. I use it to pretend to go to college. Some people also go on exclusive adult websites. I mean, it's really up to you. You can do pretty much 
anything you want. Hell, you're not only in charge of your direct experience, but also if you're building your own PC, then you're in charge of how it looks. You can take advantage of whether if you want it to be water cooled, air cooled, you want to go age doom or anime themed, have at it. And something that's kind of a double edged sword for some people, I guess, is it's going to run about as well as your wallet would allow it to. So like I said, a thousand to 1500 is like a sweet spot. If you want it to run a little better then you're obviously gonna have to invest a little bit more. My computer in total, shit, let me do some math here. So in the realm of reality, I think it was about $1,800, give or take. And this shit runs beautifully for everything, regardless of what it is I'm, I'm playing or if I'm editing or anything, runs flawlessly. I'm, I have a Ryzen 7 3700X, 32 gigs of RAM, two and a half terabytes of space. Internally, externally, I have another seven terabytes. And then I have a 3080 from EVGA that is water cooled. And I can play, let's say, Assassin's Creed Valhalla completely maxed out at 4K at a consistent 60 frames or even Borderlands 3, everything maxed out at 4K at a consistent 90 FPS. So uh, that's an insane sweet spot. I think if you were to go any higher, then that would be more if you're going to do some like intensive editing or if you're going to stream high quality while playing on max settings. But for me personally, I think this is really good. You can maybe go a little lower if you are just playing games. Something else I feel like I should add is that this is the beginning of the next generation of gaming. So within a couple years or so, where games start to be a little bit more demanding, then maybe you might want to look at something a little bit stronger. But as of right now, I think that's kind of the sweet spot, at least for me. already kind of touched on these briefly I don't want to reiterate everything but going from controller to mouse and keyboard there's definitely a huge huge learning curve but once you get it down I want to say after a consistent week week and a half and your muscle memory starts to kick in it's so much better than anything you can do on controller especially if you're playing shooters the precision you have in a mouse is so much better than anything you'd ever have on a controller and that's something everyone says but once you get more comfortable you actually feel the difference not to mention on PC you don't have to pay to play online I mean, these are all arguments that have been brought up a thousand times. You don't have to, as long as you have an internet connection, you can just hop online on anything you want. There's also an accessibility thing that consoles kind of have here and there. This is a developer thing. So on console, you can play mouse and keyboard on, say, Call of Duty. Meanwhile, you can't do it on Doom Eternal because that's something that it's software, the developers of that game haven't implemented. Meanwhile, on PC, you don't have to play a mouse and keyboard. Every game automatically is going to put you on that. But if you have a PlayStation or even an Xbox controller, you can just plug it in and remap the buttons however you like. As a lot of modern games, even some of the older ones, completely support controller. So you have an option between mouse and keyboard, controller, you can map the controller's buttons, you can map the keyboard and the mouse buttons, especially if you have a mouse with extra buttons, you can make the configuration between the two become so much better so that way your learning process is a lot more fluid and you don't have to struggle as much. Now it's kind of regurgitating some timeless shit for these last couple points so I, I want to end this off on some other points that are going a little head to head with the modern consoles. So especially in the Xbox's case we've discovered that it is capable of playing original Xbox games so long as you have the disc. I think that's the one prerequisite and I also think it's select original Xbox games not everything. We can play modern games all the way back to the original Xbox and that is something you can already do on PC without even needing the disc. And and chances are that you can find whatever game it is that you're after on sale. A lot of older games are constantly on sale. I bought the Dead Space trilogy for 20 bucks, all three games 20 bucks, all three Fear games for I think it was 12, and the Max Payne trilogy for about 15. And the majority of that came from Max Payne 3. And you could argue, well, that's cool and all, but between a console and PC, they're still both running SSDs, so load times are gonna be about the same. So you're not really gonna have to wait all that much, whether if you go console or PC. Well, theoretically, yeah, maybe there's a couple seconds difference but the real changer between the two is with Xbox and with PlayStation if you want extra space beyond that one terabyte you are gonna have to buy their proprietary I can't fucking speak they made a mandatory you have to buy their branded SSDs which is about a hundred dollars more than a normal internal SSD that you can just plop into your PC or hell if you don't even want an SSD and you just want a normal hard drive for the same price you can buy a four terabyte hard drive and with the size of games seeming 
continually getting bigger and bigger. I mean, Call of Duty refuses to optimize their shit. That game alone is a quarter of a terabyte. Having to pay $200 for a Sony branded terabyte is just plain stupid. So you're paying essentially 500 now for a console and an additional 200 later for some extra space. For that same price, you can build an entry level PC, save up a little bit of money, and then in a couple months buy a badass GPU, and now your computer outperforms any console on the market. Ah, uh, look at me, I, I sound like a PC snob right now. The transformation's already happening, but to wrap this up, especially for productivity, it, it's a no-brainer. You're gonna want to go PC. Um, you're gonna need one for pro if you're doing video editing or any kind of animation. Gaming-wise, you might be able to save a little extra money, if, especially if you're just strictly gaming. The fact that you can have mods, you can find all kinds of deals a bunch of indie games that can keep you busy. I mean, yesterday alone, I bought so many damn games that I don't care about exclusives right now. And honestly, it kind of irritates me that Sony's going the route of, hey, our exclusives are our exclusives. You can only play them on a PlayStation, whereas Microsoft is like, nah, fuck that. You can play our games wherever. You just gotta buy Game Pass. I mean, I support that. I wish Sony did as well. But like I was saying, I have so many games to play right now. I, I wouldn't care about another God of War or another Horizon Zero Dawn or my bad. Horizon Forbidden West, which is what I was excited for most. I mean, just to have a 20 hour experience at a $500 buy in price because, you know, you gotta buy the console just seems stupid. For a long time, people were stuck to a specific platform because maybe their group of friends had an Xbox or had a PlayStation and that influenced them in turn to buy said console. That's not really a problem anymore. I mean, the last couple years or last couple Call of Duties, I should say, have incorporated crossplay between PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Fortnite has crossplay between those three major platforms, mobile, and the Nintendo Switch, if I'm not mistaken. The Master Chief Collection is currently crossplay between PC and Xbox, and it was also announced once Halo Infinite multiplayer is live that's also going to be cross play between pc and xbox and i don't see cross play going anywhere anytime soon i think if that's something that's done away that's going to be a major step back in the gaming industry i think this is a limitation that should be continuously lifted explored and moving forward is something that's always considered in games where you're allowed to play with other people you know that has a multiplayer aspect whether if it's pvp or even co-op in the same vein i would also like more devs on console to incorporate mouse and keyboard support for those that prefer a console have the ability to at least play with mouse and keyboard that way they're not limited as much as someone who is playing on a pc anyways as gaming is going on and technology continues to evolve i don't see cross play going anywhere soon so if you do have people that you play with you're not really limited or constricted to a specific platform like we once were In conclusion, I hope this was apparent from the start. I'm not a fanboy of Microsoft or Sony, especially not to the point of arguing or defending them. Fuck both of them. I'm also not a PC supremacist. I mean, I just thought I had a little bit of good insight considering I'm going from someone that has never played on a computer before in my life, didn't know jack shit about computers, to building my computer this year, learning more now about computer parts than I ever have in my entire life, and me making the transition while the next generation of consoles are dropping, the next CPUs and GPUs and how accessible information is on parts and the type of PC you can build relative to your budget. A lot of stuff is more affordable now more than ever. And honestly, on the surface, consoles have a cheaper buy-in price. You may be having to make up the difference a little bit more. If they really do go with a $200 SSD, then you're going to want to tack that onto, I think, what, a $70 controller that you're probably going to have to buy, especially if you're buying one of the earlier consoles, you might get a defective controller. Meanwhile, yeah, PCs are going to be much more expensive and you are gonna have to consider things like a desk a good gaming mouse if you are gonna play fps's that require you to switch weapons very quickly like doom eternal does and that might be something you want to look into a higher refresh rate monitor if again that's something you want if you're getting into pc gaming but of course that's all preference i mean you can buy a 500 pc a 80 dollar monitor and just play minecraft on that shit that works just as well too but i gotta say for me going from playstation 4 to a high-end gpu it's such a massive difference i don't, I don't see myself going back to console i say that now in next week hey guys i got a playstation 5 fuck pc <laughs>
Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below, especially if you guys are already PC players. If there's anything I missed or any additional questions, feel free to uh, throw that in. Different video than usual and definitely unexpected, but I thought it was worth talking about considering I have been asked quite a bit whether if I was going to stay on console or not. I, I might buy PlayStation 5 further on down the road, but as of right now, I am completely content with what I have here. As far as Doom Eternal goes, I probably will still do a couple console slayer guides since the majority of people watch me for that, but until next time, I'll see y'all later.